Uh, I'm Mike Arthur. I'm co-director of the Marcellus Center for Outreach and Research. I'm also a faculty member in Geosciences. My new department head is here, so I have to kind of sound intelligent. That's hard, but I'll try. And uh, we also have a, it's an industry affiliates group called the Appalachian Basin Black Shale Group, which does actual research on um, the various units. And what I'm talking to you uh, about today is partly based on some of the work that we've been doing on the Utica, um, shale, uh, some of our students, and, uh, and then some material that we pulled together. So it really is the question is, what about this Utica shale play? We hear a lot, a lot of mention of it. Um, there are expectations, but is it going to really pan out? And my presentation is going to attempt to give you an overview Although I have to <clears throat> say with apologies that there aren't really a lot of data out there right now to deal with. And that's why we're doing research on this unit. Um, actual hard data on petroleum potential is rare. Pennsylvania penetrations of the UCA are relatively rare. They know more about it in uh, New York and in Ohio. And, uh, and quite a bit in, now in the St. Lawrence Lowe's, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. So um, first we'll define what the Utica Shale is, because that's kind of an elusive uh, unit anyway. Uh, we'll talk about its distribution, where, and um, at what depths it lies. And then for the last part, and, and uh, this is technical, but I'll, I'll, I'll make it uh, a little simpler for all of us. Um, we'll talk about the factors that influence the uh, petroleum, the hydrocarbon potential of this unit, including thermal maturity and the amount of organic matter that's, that's present. And most of you are aware that these are factors. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the context of the Marcellus, but not a lot. Most of you are aware of the Marcellus. I'm not going to talk about potential uh, environmental issues or anything like that. This is all about the Utica shale. And um, then at the end, we'll speculate as to uh, how big this might be. And if you have any ideas, you're welcome to throw them in. Okay. So the, uh, we're, some of us are geologists, so we, uh, we like little charts like this, which uh, illustrate the age of various units, their lithology, yellow is sandstones, blue typically limestones, uh, red is red shale, gray shale, and black shale. And the black shale units are the ones we're focused on because they presumably have uh, a fair amount of organic carbon in them, and that's what makes them perspective as hydrocarbon source rocks. You also know that traditionally, um, shales have not been considered reservoirs for hydrocarbons, right? They are the source rock, and that led, um, you know, everyone's interested in the source and when it matured and when it generated hydrocarbons and whether those hydrocarbons migrated into other units. That's still a, an interest, but now we have, uh, in some ways, even larger volumes of gas and oil in place in these shale units that um, are somewhat challenging to get out, but can be extracted with the new technology, particularly as um, developed through the Barnett Shale in Texas and now developing through the Marcellus Shale. Now, kind of interesting, this is at Appalachian Basin, kind of stratigraphy, New York, uh, Northern Pennsylvania. These names, you'll see some of these again. We'll talk about the Trenton Black River. That was a target for oil and gas exploration. And it turns out that most of the leasing that people, that companies had um, in this area and in Ohio was actually to get out the Trenton Black River. And it turned out that it wasn't as big a play as, uh, as it was anticipated. And so, um, but they were positioned with fairly um, cheap land, basically, to uh, attack the Marcellus. So a lot of companies benefited 
because they were looking here first. And it turns out, I'll tell you the bottom line here, is that the Utica shale was the source of most of the hydrocarbons in the Trenton Black River and in the uh, sol <coughs> Silurian clays that are above that. You might have heard of the Medina, which is big in Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. Virtually all the gas and oil in that unit probably came from the Utica, and it was generated back around uh, 250 million years ago, uh, maybe a little bit, but the Permian, uh, Pennsylvania Permian seems to have been the time that much of that uh, was generated. We have talked a lot about the Marcellus, which is Devonian, and I'll show you later on that these are um, separated by 2,000 to 7,000 feet depending or so, depending on where you are in the basin. That's kind of significant. And we like the fact that there's a relationship between these units and Appalachian tectonic events. And so from a plate tectonic um, perspective, geologists are, are excited because it appears that these um, major black shales form at times of active tectonism when the foreland, and I'll show you a diagram of this, is being loaded by thrust sheets due to continental kind of collision or other types of uh, collisions and the basin forms and subsides very rapidly and it creates the ideal conditions for the accumulation of organic carbon rich units which may or may not reflect kind of global events but certainly are tied into the application so um, it, one of the stories here is that the Utica shale was related to what's called the Taconic erosion, which was a, a mid-ordivision um, tectonic event uh, around 440 million years ago, and that, um, and you'll see the story. Okay, so we'll start right out and say, okay, we know the Marcellus is big, we're not sure exactly how big, but our colleague Terry Engelder has suggested at least 489 uh, trillion cubic feet of gas. Most of you are aware that um, that the United States uses something on the order of 23 trillion cubic feet a year in total. And so as this uh, shale gas comes online, it's going to make a big difference in imports. Um, in fact, we may have uh, a glut of gas. That's always possible. And so there's a lot of interest now in how we use that gas, how we maybe substituting it for um, coal and other things. But we won't get into that uh, at this point. All right, so Terry's estimate will round it up to 490. There could be more. Um, and so the question is, how big is the Utica? If the Utica is that big, it's huge. Because up until last year, the estimates for the total shale gas in the United States from the Energy Information Agency were on the order of 1,000 trillion feet. If the Utica is, is as large as the Marcellus in the Appalachian Basin, there's that much extractable, which is amazing. And it's um, at present rates of utilization, it's certainly century uh, of gas. But we'll come back to that because, and I'll give the bottom line now. Is I personally don't um, anticipate that the Utica is going to be as big as the Marcellus. And it's not going to be quite as important in Pennsylvania as the Marcellus shape has been. All right, so big place. So you might have done, seen various newspaper ads. There is exploration and even production from the Utica shale um, in Quebec, in uh, in New York State, from vertical wells, in Ohio, from what they call legacy vertical wells, which are relatively poor producers, but still important if you have one of them on your property. Um, Quebec, <coughs> and I'll show you the map of this, but um, there's a region in, in the uh, Laurentian lowlands, um, even out into the Gaspé Peninsula, which has Utica. Shale. It's a fairly complex play. Part of it's shallow, 
Um, but and some of it's in thr a thrust belt and deeply buried. But um, they're working on getting this out. And these are the companies, mostly Canadian companies, that are involved. And they estimate um, on the order uh, no more than 25 trillion cubic feet of gas. So much. Um, well, that's still significant, right? But not. Um, there is a little bit of exploration in the Michigan Peninsula in an equivalent to what's called the Utica. They're called the Collingwood. Again, in Kansas and all there. They're just in, in the early phase of their exploration. In Ohio, uh, mostly eastern most of Ohio, Consol, which is now uh, really into the gas picture um, has, uh, they brought in a rig devoted entirely to the using the shale, and they anticipate bringing in four to six wells this year. Um, they had a uh, discovery well, if you want to call it that, in Belmont County, Ohio, which is easternmost Ohio, that flowed 1.5 uh, million cubic feet in a 24-hour period. Now, that's pretty good, you know, as Marcellus wells go, that's not what you hope for. You hope for four to six for some of the western, uh, westernmost PA wells, and you know up to ten or even fifteen for some of the more central wells. But um, this well was not even fracked, so that's the only information we have. That was flow from a completed well that had no stimulation. So that's pretty good. So we're all. It was a vertical well, it was a test. Um, but there are others involved, and uh, Larry Wickstrom, who's the geologist for the Ohio Geological Survey, um, has been talking, he made some estimates. Uh, you know, I, I've made my own, but uh, he argues that in Ohio there's about 16 trillion cubic feet of gas in the Utica complex and about 55 billion barrels of oil, which is actually really good. Because as many of you know, if you add in the natural gas liquids and oil, that um, that's a higher BT BTU level, uh, basically. But it also, um, it makes it much more economically attractive to produce this. I'll show you more about that. Enervest, um, it's a Houston company, they initially we're targeting the Knox, which is you know, down in the Ordovician carbonates. But they, uh, in doing so, they didn't do very well in there, but they had 500 Utica penetrations. And now they claim they know a ton about the Utica, and they're ready to, to start drilling. So they'll, they'll be doing that. They're, they're a little bit farther to the west you know. Um, in Pennsylvania, there have been a couple of wells Seneca um, was drilling in McKean County, but we have no information on that. I don't know if anybody else does, but nobody's, they're kind of quiet about that. Um, Rex is planning a Butler County well. And uh, there was a test, EQT drilled that deep in the uh, in uh, Western PA in 2008, but there are no data uh, available. The only thing we know um, reasonably well is that range drilled a well, which was um, more or less completed in February of this year. Um, it went down to 12,700, but my understanding is that the Utica was at about 9,700 feet. But uh, the uh, uh, initial production was 4.4 million cubic feet in a 24-hour period. So that's really a pretty good well. Or